Shalom saints, shalom and I hope you are doing fine. Shalom, shalom, shalom. God bless you saints. I greet you all with the peace of Almighty God as you all join in. Young Sirzel, shalom, 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 shalom sister Portia Slick, shalom sister Kimberly, sister China. Shalom, Sister Shanice, Sue, M94, Shalom, Tenda Tina, Shalom, Sister Giraj, Sister Tia, Shalom, Shalom, Beloved Saints, Shalom, Sister Rose, Sister Quincy, Shalom, Shalom, Sister Zoe Kincaid, Shalom, Grace upon Grace, Oziolog, Shalom, Pastor Joel, more grace to you. Shalom, 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 Sister Lori, aka Twin, Shalom, I see you. Shalom, Sister Beth. Shalom, 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 Matimu Yakuhula. Shalom, Sister Kita. Sister Leila Wright. Shalom, Sister. Shalom, 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 as you join in. Argar, Shalom. Shalom, Lay. Shalom, 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 Bram. Sister Tiffany, I'm happy that you have, were able to join. Sister Pamela, Shalom. Sister Andrea Watson, Shalom. Shalom, 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 Sister Pauline, Sister Jacqueline Bogle, shalom, 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 Sister Alicia T, Kathy Risky One, shalom, Sister Juanita, shalom, I am Haps, shalom, brother, from New York, oh, shalom, Mr. Dela Cruz, shalom, Sister Michelle, shalom, Brother Harry, shalom, shalom, Sister Imelda, Sister Feli Belli, Shalom. Seek wisdom and understanding. Shalom. Sister Minky Hoyt, I'm glad to see you. Sister Fistastic Karen from Wyoming. Shalom. 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 Saint Sister Anastasia. Shalom. Sister Lorian, our sunshine. Shalom. Sister Michelle Bryan. Shalom. Saints, you have all joined in and I have greeted you all with the peace of God, including Paradigm Shift 22. I'm happy to see you. Yo, Yema. Shalom. Sister Toya Thorpe. Shalom. Sister Jelicia. Shalom. Shalom, my sunshine. Shalom. And I love you more. Dalom sister shalom shalom so saints the title for this live stream is mystery about the blood do you know the mystery about the blood any blood not just your blood the blood of animals and the blood of jesus because most of us christians we say oh blood of jesus blood of jesus but we don't understand the spiritual implications of pleading the blood of jesus we don't have understanding so today i'm gonna take you on a journey to understand the mystery about the blood and once you understand this mystery beloved saints you will understand the power of covenants through blood okay and you will understand that there are things that we do here in the land of the living that has to do with blood that unfortunately many, many people, including Christians, have entered into evil covenants with Satan because of the inability to understand blood covenants. If you hear any noise, saints, please forgive me. My kids are home and, you know, they will do what they do come down the stairs hard and everything do you see you here so don't worry and um, please accept my apologies but there is it's going to be noise because yesterday i was actually listening to the live stream the replay and i could hear the noise and i said no i have to apologize to the saints <laughs> all right saints so please do get your your bibles ready pen and paper so that you can take notes um and I want to also to understand that we are on this corporate fasting up to the 29th. Okay, those of you that have joined the corporate fasting, the corporate fasting will take place until the 29th. All right, saints of this month. So make sure you have your matzo ready, matzo bread ready for Holy Communion that will take place on the 29th of this month of February. All right, saints um i think that is all um and please do something make sure you are taking part of the holy communion right it is important that you don't miss 
this ministration is especially of benefit for those of you who have autoimmune diseases, diseases of the blood, talking about lupus, anemia, um, anything that drains your blood, right? Certain scriptures that I'm going to give you today, you can pray over yourself and you'll be healed, all right? Um, it is important that you understand that diseases that is, means that something is not all right with the blood, that has been a demonic tampering of your blood, okay? And those diseases can be cured with the blood of Jesus. It's just that some of us believers, we don't understand the authority that the blood of Jesus gives us. Okay? And we don't understand the power of the blood of Jesus. We just think of the blood of Jesus as protection. Yes, it is protection. I'm not denying that. And neither does the Bible. But the blood of Jesus, saints, heals. Okay? Restores you in and out. Not only your spirit, but your physical body. But I'm not going to go into deep detail because we are not on that time yet. We are going to consecrate this live stream unto the Lord first. We are going to invite him to be here because without the Holy Spirit, um, I cannot preach the gospel to you. Okay? Um, so we, I need to be endowed. Okay? And you also need to be endowed with the Holy Spirit so that whatever it is that is being taught here, by the grace of the Holy Spirit, you will have understanding. Because what happens is that Satan blinds the understanding of man so that they will not have divine knowledge from God of, of Scripture. And they won't, they, therefore, you won't be able to apply Scripture to your particular situation because you lack understanding. And we know that that is the devil's job, to blind our understanding, to stop us from having understanding. You that, Brother Brian, this is the perfect live stream for you. Once you understand these principles that are going to be given to you today, which is the word of God, you are never going to like iron again. Your blood will be perfect. Okay, and I stand here as a witness to you. I suffered from anemia for a long time and I de began to declare the word of God. And I went and retest again and I was whole again. All right. Um, beloved saints, I'm here to say that some... Some of you here are suffering from things that you don't even have explanation for. You have weird dreams, you, you, but you don't understand what is going on. Today, you are going to have understanding, all right? And I'm sure that each ministration, God will begin to unveil more and more secrets to us, okay? Glory be to God. So bring your Bibles, please, pen and paper, so that you can... Um, Write down certain scriptures because you're going to need to write these scriptures. I have a powerful testimony of a sister that she sent me today. And she had been writing the scriptures and declaring the scriptures as I have been advising. And she got massive, massive testimony breakthrough and is something related to blood as well. So saints, let us pray to consecrate this live stream unto the Lord our God. And invite him to be here with us. All right. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that guides us, gives us understanding. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. Because without the shedding of the blood of Jesus, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be redeemed, atoned for. So Lord, we thank you for having a plan for our salvation, for our redemption, even before we were born. Father Lord, I thank you. And we thank you, Father Lord, together, Lord God, as a congregation, for your presence, for your constant patience with us, Lord God. Father Lord, we thank you for your love, that it is your love that made you to never give up on us, even when we were in the world, engaging in demonic activities, in sinful activities that are against you you still were merciful you still waited for us patiently lord god and we know that your love for us is unconditional oh lord you don't love us for what we have done lord god oh, because we can do something but you love us because you've created us we are your children and your love is unconditional father lord we love you as well and we need you we need your presence we need your anointing. We need your Holy Spirit. We need your presence very near to us, Father, because without you, we are powerless. 
Without you, there is nothing we can do. There is nowhere we can go to find refuge because you are our refuge. You are our strong tower in which we run when we are scared, when we are being afflicted. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm asking you today that you will forgive us our sins, our transgressions and iniquities up to 50 generations before us, almighty God. Be merciful, Father. Everlasting Father, show us mercy and forgiveness. Show us compassion, Lord God. Father Lord, there are many people here that are sick, wounded, Father Lord, and don't know what to do anymore. And they need your touch. And they need your presence. And they need your healing. And they need your restoration. But moreover, Father Lord, I pray for the redemptions of the redemption of the souls that are still in sin, Lord God, serving the enemy. Father Lord, summon from the four corners of the world all those who need to hear the gospel today in order to repent and be born again and escape eternal damnation. Because that is why you sent your son to die for us on that cross for our redemption, so that we will not end in eternal hell and damnation, but we will end in heaven, Lord God. Father, Lord, I consecrate this live stream before your holy throne of grace and glory and power and honor. And I'm asking you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, take possession of this live stream. Take possession of us, our hearts, our souls, our spirits, our bodies, and our children. Have dominion, have control, have sovereignty, have all authority, Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I'm asking you today as we join here, as we gather as a holy congregation, continue to, to bind the devil father lord and every satanic and demonic spirit father lord principalities rulers of darkness in which assignment is to steal kill destroy divide cause confusion distractions father lord and bind them with the everlasting chains of your holy ghost fire cast them all onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever so that they won't have any influence against us against this live stream lord god father i pray that you will deliver us as well from all forms of retaliation from the kingdom of darkness deliver us jehovah with your mighty hand with your powerful hand lord god father lord i drench i saturate Father Lord, our environment with your precious blood. I, 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 Father Lord, envelop each one of us and our children, Father Lord, in your precious blood. Oh Lord Jesus, I cover the affairs of this live stream with your precious blood, Lord Jesus. I plead the power of your blood upon this live stream, Lord Jesus. And I'm asking you manifest. Manifest your presence. Manifest your anointing. Manifest your power, Father Lord, within this live stream, Lord God. Let souls come to the realization of their sin and their need of power, Father Lord, within this live stream, Lord God. Let souls come to the realization of their sin and their need of that you will transform, that you will give power, that you will anoint, that you will, Father Lord, Deliver your children with your power, with your might, Lord God, that you will not allow the kingdom of darkness to have dominion, control, authority, to humiliate, to control, to manipulate your servants. Lord God, I pray that today, Father Lord, you will not pass us by, Lord God, that there will be healing, there will be restoration, there will be, Father Lord, the manifestation of your power, the manifestation of your blood, the manifestation, Father Lord, of wisdom, Father Lord, there will be redemption, there will be healing and if there is any agents of darkness that are here on this live stream with the assignment to sabotage to cause confusion to send demonic arrows to monitor for evil father lord let your fire the consuming fire of your wrath burn them to ashes and, and evict them of this platform almighty god in the mighty name of jesus father lord i'm asking you today move in our midst send forth your holy ghost father lord let the knowledge come upon thy children so that father lord upon receipt of knowledge they will be set free immediately whether it's an infirmity whether father lord is a, is a bondage a stronghold or a demonic covenant oh father lord i pray for healing i pray for restoration i pray for yokes to be broken strongholds to be broken i cover father lord the moderators with your precious blood i pray that you will hide them under your shadow father lord 
so that they will be hidden from the hands of the wicked one from the eyes of the enemy oh father lord hide us here on this live stream from wicked and demonic satanic sabotage and humiliation and persecution and control in the name of jesus father lord i thank you because you are too faithful to fail us there is none like you there is power in your name there is authority there is dominion and there is none like you oh lord and we thank you and we honor you in the name of the father the son and of the holy ghost in jesus mighty name amen amen and amen beloved saints please it's time for you to get your bibles ready pen and paper as i already told you and we're gonna understand today the mystery about the blood all right where it all started what is the spiritual uh, mystery that is in the blood okay once you understand this I'm sure things will be will make much sense to you. It will be easier for you to pray certain scriptures and understand. Because sometimes you can receive a word from God and you need that word to liberate you and to heal you and to do whatever. But if you don't understand the spiritual um, meaning of that word, of that scripture, you are not going to be efficient in your prayer because that scripture will not be able to activate in you the faith that you need. To get from God answers. All right. Let us go. Leviticus 17 11. Leviticus 17 11. And again I am reading from the Old Testament. Right. Leviticus 17 11. Thank you sister Shan for the scripture. For the life of a creature is in the blood. And I have given it to you. To make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. So the Bible is telling us here that God has created every creature. Creature is what? Animal. Okay. Um, and what? With life. And the essence of life is blood. Okay. And the, the Lord goes further and he says, And I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. Understand something. We are talking about the Old Testament. Jesus had not yet manifested, but God had given permission to human beings to make sacrifices when they sin, to atone for their sins. Now, let's think a little bit. Let's dive deep. How many re pagan religions, including voodoo, hutu, uh, ancestral worship, that have altars and they are using as we speak um fowls they are using animals like goats they are slaughtering those animals and they are using that blood to still speak with the devil to, to to establish covenants with the devil come on now some of you for instance have watched films if you are not covenants with the devil Come on now. Some of you, for instance, have watched films if you are not make establish to because if you the when you shed blood, immediately that becomes something spiritual. Because it is written Leviticus 17 and 11. Okay? That is why it is important that you don't eat food, animals that have not been slaughtered the proper way. Okay, animals that have been killed anyhow, you can't eat because you will be eating that blood. So when any blood is shed, immediately there is a signal that is sent to the spiritual realm. That look, there is blood, there is life that has been shed. And what happens is that demons are drawn to that blood. Satan is drawn to that blood. And as we speak right now. There are people who are slaughtering animals and establishing covenants with demons to be able to manipulate others, to be able to control, to even be able to, to kill, to, 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 to be able to control the, the things and, and, and things around and people. All right. For instance, those who worship the ancestors that are ancestral, they, they like to kill fowls and goats and rams and sheep and whatever to call the ancestors and they shed that blood and in exchange they want a spiritual uh, visitation they want a certain spirit to come and do something 
Am I making sense? So all blood, saints, has life. Okay? All blood in every creature. The life of that creature is in the blood. And when it's shed, there is a certain signal that is sent to the spiritual realm that invites demons. Because now we cannot atone our sins with um, putting any blood on the altar because Jesus has come. But there is also another religion, all right, that starts with the letter I. That there comes a time where they slaughter goats. Yes, it is true. They slaughter goats and they have a celebration. They have a feast. And you know how that religion is. Very violent. And they slaughter the, the goats. It's not that. It's not that. It's a religion. With I-S. Yes, Sister Feli Belly, you are correct. That religion that comes at time of the year that they slaughter goats. Everybody goes and gets a goat and they slaughter it. They, they erect an altar. They are speaking into the spirit. Okay? They are speaking into the spirit. They are, uh, 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 they are sending a signal to the spiritual realm and they want a certain impartation to visit them. Okay? Whether the people who are doing it know or not, the Bible will not let me lie. Leviticus 17, 11, for the life of a creature is in the blood and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. So Satan knows that God has this principle that he has given to us the blood for atonement of, of sins on the altar. This was before the, the, the new covenant with Jesus. Okay, so it is written. So the Satan knows this principle. So that is why he still wants people to go and slaughter these animals to him. It is not to God because we are not under this covenant anymore. But Satan is still using this spiritual principle to establish covenant with men. To make transactions with men. Do you understand what I'm saying? And let me go deeper. He even accepts the blood of human beings as well. Because there are certain people who do the sacrifices, especially those in higher places. Because life is in the blood. Blood sends a signal to the spirit. Blood empowers people. Okay? Demons receive that blood and then they begin to empower human beings with wealth, prosperity, whatever it is that they need. And unfortunately... Some of these people that did this uh, uh, were our family members because of their ignorance, because of their religion. Some of these people that did this uh, uh, were our family members because of their ignorance, because of their religion, the consequences of the co blood covenants that they've established with the enemy. You don't know what your forefathers did. You don't know if they even sacrificed the animals. You don't know if they sacrificed human beings. You don't know what it is that they have done. And now you are now here and you are suffering because of what they did. Okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? Is it making sense, saints? Please, if you don't understand, let me know. So I want to say this to you. Every one of these people that is shedding this blood, they are doing it because they want a, a certain favors from the enemy. And like I said, some of us are suffering not because we did it, but because our family members, they were doing these things. For instance, in the African religion concept, all right, we the Africans believe that the ancestors are very much alive in the spiritual realm and they need to be fed, they need to be clothed, they need, they need to sacrifice animals to them so they can appease them, so they can intercede for them. And you see that when they have... Um, there is a time where a family goes to a shrine and begins to slaughter animals to please the ancestors of that family line or whatever. But what people don't understand is that they are indeed establishing, reinforcing the covenants that their forefathers left for them to continue. Reinforcing covenants with Satan, covenants with the devil. 
And the reason why they keep going to these shrines, to these altars, to sacrifice unto the ancestors is because they know if those altars are not, don't, don't, don't receive blood, there will be consequences, there will be retaliation. But now you have come, you are a believer, and you don't understand the mystery about the blood. And you are suffering because those altars are crying against you, and you don't know how to go about it. Your finances are in disarray. Your health is destroyed. Your relationships are destroyed. Everything is destroyed and you are crying but lord i'm a believer i'm supposed to have the victory yet i am oppressed because there is an altar somewhere that has received blood always perhaps receiving blood from your blood relatives that are going there and sacrificing to it and you have not gone and now you are suffering retaliation from the kingdom of darkness because of something that you know not no don't know about don't have any knowledge about okay but i'm here to say that the devil has no authorization to continue to oppress you because of a blood covenant somebody did somewhere without your knowledge always doing it there is hope for you and me in jesus name let me let me take you again leviticus 17 14 14 you have to have understanding saints that's why i'm going into deep detail leviticus 17 verse 14 and it reads because the life of every creature is in the blood it is because the life of every creature is its blood that is why i have said to the israelites you must not eat the blood of any creature because the life of every creature is its blood anyone who eats it must be cut off do you understand god has here a a, a message you will be cut off if you consume blood because blood means life but how many instances Women would use, will use their menstrual blood to spirit cook for husbands, for boyfriends, to manipulate them, to control them. And there is an actress at the other day I mentioned, a, 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 an actress, okay, that called Raven Simone, she's married. And the, the, her wife, because they are, they are a couple, yeah, and the wife was saying that she used her menstrual blood to put in a spaghetti bolognese. So that she would bewitch Raven Simone. And this was live on an interview. You can go and Google and you will see that I'm not lying. And Raven Simone was like, ah, my wife, that's why I love you so much. She said, yes, because the wife said, yes, because I did the ritual and I put the blood, the menstrual blood on the spaghetti bolognese. You see what, where we are going with this? Sister Deidre Nicole is saying that she saw the interview and many of you, I think you saw it too. So I'm here to say that there is a way and you can consume this blood and become an abomination to God without knowing. Sometimes we go to parties and we don't know that certain parties, certain people that host parties, those parties are not for your enjoyment, for your entertainment, but is to give you blood so that through that blood, those parties are not for your enjoyment, for your entertainment, but is to give you blood so that through that blood, people they can bring for Satan to control, humiliate, steal destinies and destroy. That is why you will see that in the kingdom of darkness, there is a lot of money. You will see that agents of darkness they are never short of money to promote lavish parties, to have uh, access to, to, to young people, to, to wealth, to impress. There is never lack of anything. All right. So I want you to understand that. And not only that, some of these, um, for instance, rich people that promote these parties, not only there is blood in the food that they are going to be serving and the drinks that they are going to be serving, but not only that, but there will be blood covenants in that party because why? People will engage in sensual activities, orgies, orgies. Okay, they will engage in these activities during the party and that is a sacrifice unto the devil. Exchange of blood between those people that are in that party and they will swap and then it will be a big mess, a big abomination. And that is how the devil is receiving that blood because sperm is blood. Yeah, and not only that, fluids. Okay, and there will be a massive ritual to the devil. And now the devil can come down because power empowers demonic entities. Power, em 
the blood of Jesus empowers God to come and redeem you, to come and rescue you, to come and do something for you. But the blood of human beings and animals powers Satan to come and fulfill his agenda, his wicked agenda against people. All right. So that is what I'm trying to explain to you. Life is spiritual. And once you understand that, you will have a different perspective of life. Let us go Genesis 9, 4. Genesis 9, 4. But you, man, but you must not eat meat that has its lifeblood still in it. I was saying that, that you can, we as believers can only eat meat that is kosher. Or meat that has been killed, you know, animals that have been killed the biblical way, which is to slaughter and allow the blood to gush out completely. All right. If you go to the supermarket and you cannot find kosher, you can buy halal. Okay. It's the process of slaughtering the animal means that has followed the, 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 the way of the Bible. Okay. I said, if you can't find kosher, you can find halal. Halal is the same. It, it, it means that they have slaughtered the animal properly. That black pudding, for instance, that the Caribbeans and the English people eat is blood. So God forbids that. When people eat that, demons can come and, and, and dwell and you can be possessed. There are people who like their steak rare, almost raw. That is a no-no. Okay? This is something... Even somebody says halal meat have been prayed over it. You can, you can cancel with your own prayer. Because everything you buy at your supermarket has been consecrated to Satan. The owners of those supermarkets are not, are not Christian. The owners of those big chains are not believers. Even when you buy moisturizer to moisturize your skin. You're not going to eat them. All right, so you need to use your discernment because everything that is for sale here in the land of the living, who are the people who own the big corporations? Is it me and you? Or is it the big people, the movers and shakers? You buy, you bring it, you bring it home, put it on your counter, go and get your holy water. Don't I teach you to bring your holy water during consecration day? Put the holy water over the meat. You can even anoint the meat. And consecrate it to God. But at least there is no blood in that meat. That is what is more, more important. Because Genesis 9.4 is saying. But you must not eat meat that has its life blood. Still in it. The Abrahamic religions. Understand this. Which is Jewish, Muslims. And, 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 um, and Christians. Which is Jewish, Muslims. And, 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 um, and Christians onto the kingdom of darkness and has a signal into the kingdom of God if you are pleading the blood of Jesus but we have not addressed that situation right now let us go saints Ezekiel 16 6 Ezekiel 16 6 then I passed by and saw you kicking about in your blood. And as you lay there in your blood, I said to you, leave. This is an important scripture for you that are suffering from infirmities. In your blood. Anemia, HIV, autoimmune diseases, lupus, I don't know. Sickle cell. If you meditate on Ezekiel 16, 6 and you plead the blood of Jesus, God will resurrect you. If you are, here it says, then I passed by you and saw you kicking about in your blood. You are struggling with your blood. You are struggling, struggling with a certain ailment, a certain infirmity. Something was drain, is draining your blood. But God, he said, as you lay there in your blood, I said to you, leave. 
this scripture as well if you someone was involved in a car accident and they are bleeding if you speak ezekiel 16 6 in the name of jesus that person will not die all right that person will not die somebody said about blood, blood transfusion what did jesus do for for us what did jesus what did he do for us? He died on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins, for blood transfusion. So that you will not have your own corrupted blood, but you will have in you the blood of Jesus. So blood transfusion is okay. If you are had an accident, you are in need of blood, you go to a hospital, all you need to do is pray over the blood that has been donated to you. That as you receive that blood, plead the blood of Jesus. So that you will not going to be contaminated with no spiritual diseases because God came to save you. So somebody has come as well to save you by donating blood. In my country, for instance, if somebody needs blood, the first people who are going to be asked to donate is the family. So that is not an issue. Let us go to 1 John 5, 6. Very important scripture, 1 John 5, 6, and it reads, This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. You see here, when we have consecration day, what do I tell you to bring? I say to you, bring anointing oil, represents the blood of Jesus, and bring water. Don't I say that to you? Don't I say bring the olive oil and the water for consecration? Here's the scripture, 1 John 5, 6. This is the one who came by water and blood. Jesus Christ, he did not come by water only, but by water and blood. That is why you need in your home anointing oil and you need the holy water to represent the, the one that has come by water and what? And blood. You that think I don't need to consecrate now. No, no, holy water. I'm not a Catholic. Look at the Bible. Facts over feelings or opinions. Because Satan understands the spiritual principles, but and we need to be an, in, in understanding. We have to have understanding because the, the, the agents of darkness have understanding. That is why the marine kingdom, when they want to do something to someone, they take the blood and they go to the ocean and they go to the river to establish covenants with Satan and the, 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 the fallen angels, the, the dragon that is in the sea. You understand? That is why I was saying here it is important that you are not sleeping around with anyone. They can take that condom that has your deposit in it. They can take a cloth where they wipe you with it and take that and bring it to the marine kingdom, which is to the waters. For the, those goddesses that we have, so many of them here that are daughters of the goddesses of the sea that are here on, on, on TikTok. And they don't even hiding. They... Have their names publicly for you to know who you're dealing with. This is the type of rituals they do. To steal people's stars, to spill, steal people's greatness, to speak their, steal their reproductive gates, steal their hearts, steal their, 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 internal, their internal organs so that they won't have children. These are the things that they do. They understand that there, is a, that there is a spiritual principle of water and blood. And they will take your blood. They will take everything and bring it to the sea. And begin to call on the, upon their goddesses. Call upon those <clears throat> mermaid spirits. To do something for them. Favors for them. And some of them are doing work for others. There are witches. That there are women. that are high priestess for the marine kingdom. That they do spells and incantations and they do work for people and they will tell that person to bring this and bring that especially women like to go to them when they want to a man to marry them they want a certain man to leave their wife and begin and marry them they want a certain powerful man to, to to abandon his wife and marry them so they can control the finances of that man 
There are people here that do that kind of work. If you want to, to think that I'm lying, look at the people who have, oh God, this, 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 this. They are telling you that there are maidens of the mermaid. Mermaid spirits have maidens. Okay. Some of them disguised to be prophetesses. That is another disguise that they are using to infiltrate the church. They are disguised as prophetess. And they dress all in white. Wear all white. They have bells. And they like to gather by the sea. All their prophecies, everything that they do has to do with the marine kingdom and water. And many people are going to these so-called churches thinking that these are Christian women that have the gift of prophecy. But what they don't understand, they are at the service of the goddess. This is true. This is not a joke. Many of these career women, women that are empowered, women that uh, are feminist, women that are saying that they don't need men for nothing. These feminine, feminist move, movements are feminists of the goddess. They believe that women are goddesses and men should worship them. Because what is the devil's main objective? To pervert the divine order of God. Jesus as the head of the church, the man as the head of the home and the woman. And the woman has to submit to the man. They don't want that. So that's why these goddesses associations. And to be honest, some of them are your sororities. They never get married. They never have, they, everything is pro-women, pro-women, pro-women. This is a movement of the marine kingdom. And is governed by blood oaths. They take blood oaths. The other day I was watching a, a girl that is it's gone viral. She's quite famous. She said that she had an opportunity to go to a celebrity party. And it was Halloween when she was invited. And then she decided to go. And when she, they got to the entrance, they went and called a man like an usher. And that man said to that young lady and the other ladies, and he said, look, if he, for you to get access to this part of you, we are going to have to take some blood samples. And the girl said, no, I'm not about that life. No one is taking no blood sample. I'm going home. And she said that she went and took a cab and her friends accepted to take the blood sample. And because they really wanted to go into that celebrity party. And the friends partook of it. But what you don't understand is that, that though, so you see, a lot of people saw what saw it. So they, they can testify I'm not lying. Because the sister Dalila is watching, watching things, you know. I don't sit down and just preach what I don't know. I go and look for, for examples to come and teach. Why would that celebrity party request from the guests a sample of blood because it's a blood covenant that you have to establish with satan before you enter into have access into that celebrity party you can't go there without entering into a blood oath with that blood they can control your emotions your 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 your, your, your mood they can control everything so that's why they ask for blood and also not only that once they have your blood they can control you so that you will not disclose of the secrets inside of that party and majority of these celebrity parties they all wear white in fact some of them when they celebrate their birthday they put on the invitation all white party they are telling you that there is going to be a spiritual aspect of that party where that party is sponsored by the marine kingdom this is not a joke it's either we wake up as believers saints or we're going to be consumed by the enemy so i'm going to read again first john 5 6, 6 this is the one who came by water and blood jesus christ he did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit who testifies because the spirit is the truth. Let me go deeper. When you engage in oral sensual activities, you, the ladies, are consuming blood with your mouth directly from the source. 
And you, the gentlemen, are consuming water because the fluids that come from that woman are water. And you are establishing a covenant of both of you of water and blood. That is why some of you, you don't understand why you cannot prosper. You don't understand why you are constantly sick. You don't understand why you are constantly feeling drained, no energy for nothing. Because you have sacrificed blood and water into a demonic altar. And Satan now is in control. God is not. Because that act in itself is an, is an abomination before God. Is defying God's authority. Is defying God's commandments for you. Do you understand what I'm saying, saints? Am I making sense? Please, if I'm not making sense, let me know. These are covenants. Okay? Don't think that you, what you are doing, even if it is within the confinement of marriage, it is not spiritual. Sensual acts are spiritual. God created like that. You are becoming one with the other person. So something spiritual is happening. A spiritual uh, joint, joining of two spirits is happening. That is why some of you have entered into a, a, an agreement. You entered into a blood oath with that person that you slept with. And that is why you now cannot move forward. You feel stuck. You begin to become obsessed by that person. And some of you, because you've entered in so many blood oaths with so many people. You've entered in so many of these blood oaths. You are going depressed. You're feeling depression. You're now depressed. You are now hearing voices. In fact, you are so connected to many men if you are a lady because of your join your blood oath with them when they are going through trials and tribulations you are going through it as well when they are losing you are losing when they are losing their minds you are losing your mind when they are being incarcerated you are living a life of bondage and stronghold because you entered into a blood oath with multiple people a blood oath and a water and a blood oath and you feel stuck. You feel like you can't, cannot come out. You are constantly depressed. You are con constantly unable to feel any positive thing about life. There is hope in Jesus Christ. Don't worry. Today is your, the day of your freedom and your liberation in Christ Jesus. But first, you need to understand what you have done wrong. So that, you can so that God can fix it. If you don't see where you have gone wrong and how you have established this covenant, how are you going to repent? If you don't have understanding. Because we cannot repent about something we, do, we, we have not, no understanding of. You can only repent of that that you have understanding. Very important what I'm teaching you today. Life changing ministration. Let us go saints again. Hebrews 9 from 12 to 14. Hebrews 9. From 12 to 14. Mystery about the blood. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves. But he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood. Thus obtaining eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean. Sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. Understand something. Without the eternal redemption of Christ Jesus, you are unable to serve Christ. Without renouncing all the covenants of blood, all the oath, blood oaths, you are not going to be able to serve God, the living God. To serve the living God, you have to be atoned for. You have to be made clean. You have to be made righteous. You have to be ceremonially clean. 
Some of you that think that you can live anyhow and still come to church and clamp your hand and your tambourine and shake and think, hey, the blood of Jesus. That blood is not any any blood that you can come and connect with that blood and make a, make a covenant with when you are doing everything that, that, that pleases the devil. That is not how it goes. It does not work like that. If your pastor is telling you that it works like that, he's lying to you. How many of us all our lives in church, in and out, nothing is changing. All our lives in and out of church, in and out of prayer group, in and out of prayer group and, 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 and sermon and this and church activities and nothing is changing. You are the same, nothing is changing. You are just the same. Jumping from one love stream to another, from one prophet to another, from one papa to another, nothing is changed. Because why? Only... He that entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption, has the power to do what? To sanctify you. You have to be sanctified, made clean by the blood of Jesus. And if you understand this scripture here, he's saying if the blood of calves and, and the blood of goats were able to cleanse the Hebrews, in the Old Testament from their own righteousness. What more the blood of Jesus? So you that you, th you can see now where the devil's got you. Where has the legal right of the devil been established against your life? You can see mm, on that day when I did this, when I did that. Because the Holy Spirit is now ministering to you what it is that you did wrong. You see? Now you are understanding where you've messed up. Let us go to verse 14. How much more then will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death. Those acts of blood oaths that you entered into through sensual activity, through consuming blood, through doing God knows what else that I've already explained to you, including ancestral worship and, and all these different things. Come on now. That blood has the power to cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. All those acts that are mentioned before, they lead all to death. There is another blood oath young people like to do. And there was an actress that did that same blood oath with a then husband that she's not with, Megan Fox. There are many young people who prickle their finger and then the other will prickle. They will then exchange and drink the blood of one another and make vows. Establish vows. Some of them will use a tree as a point of contact and, 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 and pour some of their finger there on the tree with the other person. Some of them will pour into a, we put into a certain cloth, throw it into a river and everything. People do these things. People do this in school, in secondary school, what we call uh, high school sweethearts. They do it. Some of you, your children have done it. That's why they're always sick. And you know what that means? That one, when one of them is sick and the other one is not sick, the other one gets sick because there is a blood oath that has been done. Megan Fox did this and she was saying that she they, they, they take they used to she used to make a blood oath every week with her then husband where they will she will open up a, a cut somewhere in her body and he will come and drink and she will do the same. I'm telling you this this is interview is public. It's not even a secret. You can go and 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 and, and check it for yourself. And guess what? Young people are watching and young people are going to do it because they worship them. They see them as, as celebrities. They envy them, their the lifestyle. These are blood oaths. And there are societies, clubs, bars, that people that have this habit go to, to do this in a sanitary condition, in a sanitary, with sanitary facilities. I'm not lying to you. There are clubs that you need to be a member of because obviously you have to be into that kind of stuff. And you gain your membership and then you join them. And then you begin to do these things. 
All right? So these are the things that happen. I'm not here to lie to you. You can go and Google for yourself. There are certain clubs, people that are into that. Those are covenants. But there are young people that because they are young, they don't have the money, they, 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 they are underage, they will do this amongst themselves. And don't forget the power and the influence of these actresses and these celebrities upon the youths. Okay? It's very, very powerful. They have influence. That's why we call them influencers. And they have great following. And the following is young people. So these things that I'm telling you here is not a joke. This is facts. And there is a drink. It's an energy drink called something bull. And one of the ingredients of that drink is the semen of a bull. So people who are drinking that drink, they are drinking blood because they are drinking the semen of that bull. Do you understand what I'm saying? So these, these are not the things that you can mess about with. You can play, you can joke with it, you can do whatever it is that you are doing. Life is spiritual. And there is another one called monster as well that has all sorts of ingredients that are an abomination to God that defiles you. Okay? So let us go to Revelation 12, 11. You that are beginning to feel discouraged and you are beginning to lose hope and think, but how can I come out of this? This is too deep. And I am, you know, confused. Don't be confused. And um, <laughs> there are people, right? They are in hospitals. What we call in the healthcare industry. And they have there been planted by the enemy to collect placentas, to collect the blood of uh, that comes out of a woman after giving birth. So that they can use such things for rituals. This happens as well. So when you are going to hospital, whether for a treatment, operation, whatever it is. This is a time for your family to be fasting, to be praying, to be claiming the power of the blood of Jesus to ask the Lord to go ahead of you as a column of cloud by day, ordering their steps. Mrs. Erin is here saying something and I've been speaking about this, about the placentas, all these things the hospital will do. They will offer, to, that's why they come 3 a.m. when the mother is tired and they say, oh, we need to take the baby for certain tests. They are going to do a blood covenant with that baby. That is why when you are to about to go into labor as a lady, your husband needs to be with you from beginning to end. Or if he is at work, get your mother, get somebody. But by all means, don't be left alone in the maternity words. All right. So these are things that you need to be very careful. Open your eyes. We, the Christian people, are the only ones who are not spiritual. We'll th we think that there is no need because I'm not a witch. I'm not an agent of darkness. So why do I know, need to know about all these things? You need to know so that you can protect yourself. Knowledge is power. Once you know something and you begin to see people moving funny around you, you will say, hmm, I'm not a candidate to this. I know better in Jesus' name. So let us go for Revelations 12, 11. You that want the victory, say, Sister Dalila, I'm tired. It has been just negativity from negativity from negativity. I want to know how do I come out of this? Don't worry. Revelation 12, 11. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. You can triumph over every one of these covenants. 
by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony you can triumph over the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of the, of your testimony you need the blood of the lamb that is the only blood that can cancel any blood oath you've entered into consciously consciously or unconsciously that is the only blood all right there is no other blood but the blood of the lamb and we are now you will see that majority of these celebrities they are consuming the placenta of the children and they are making capsules and all these different things and including there was an actress that she was complimented on her skin and she was asked oh but what kind of moisturizer you use on your skin to make it so young and she said i use she said that she used um a cream made of a thousand four skins of baby boys i kid you not that interview is online you can go and google it here's the name of the actress it's there go and look for that interview you will see it so she's saying to you that that is the kind of rituals that they do this is how they function this is how they operate okay and that is why it's important that you know what certain cosmetics you put on your face if you want me to be honest use the old g stuff it is better than try to follow these trends and companies and everything and everything and then now all of a sudden your skin is looking strange and when you don't have that cream your skin begins to 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 sag in this and this and this and this and that this is not a joke life is spiritual and you must we as christians we need to understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and rulers of darkness in high places you're taking your children to a doctor make sure you are there don't allow your child to be alone with them okay you're gonna have some blood work done pray about it so lord don't let my blood to be used for anything else but the purpose of the blood work you need to pray and if you pray and you plead the blood of jesus the devil cannot have access to you and i want to say this saints there is even another skin care um, a treatment procedure that celebrities do they draw blood from they call it blood blood uh, i don't know but they draw blood from their face and they bleed and they make a, make themselves release all that blood they do these things kim k does it somebody has the name here yeah some of the the it's a facial procedure okay read what's in your creams if you see anything that says embryo don't put it on your skin okay anything that is drawing blood constantly 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 for what reason hmm? so you have to everything that you do saints you have to consult god if it is his will for you to do it not everything that the world is doing is for you look at the how now um the scientists have now discovered that um majority of these fillers that the women are using to enhance themselves they cause cancer they have cancer causing agents in them so all these different things saints are very important even if you are about to you need a blood transfusion ask the lord lord i don't want any blood in me that is not good and that you've got to understand that there is something as well 
that they are doing cause that they are doing now and is demonic they are now using so many um things with spirit cooking spirit cooking is a thing that has been introduced by a woman that is a head witch is the one who is behind every person something abramovic is her name and she introduced the concept of spirit cooking and in this spirit cooking that they do they mix um so many different things breast milk semen all these different things menstrual blood and what they do saints is that they will dry these things like how you dry spices right so that when they are using in people's foods and and salads and everything people would just think oh it's just a spice so you have to be very careful whom you eat from because satan's main objective is that he has access to you has access to your blood he has access to your body so that he can control you and oppress you and we some of us make it so easy by the things that we eat all right and the kind of things that we we use to take care of ourselves there are there is a hair product that i used to even see it in the 80s called placenta and it's an oil it's sold in hair shops if you go now you will see it and the people women use it to make their hair shiny and everything isn't that using placenta to do things come on now they use it for deep conditioning I remember back in the 80s when we used to have roller sets and and we used to have the deep oils. You know, there is one called placenta. It's sold today. You can go to the hair shop, to the black hair shops, you will find it. You will find these things. So I'm here to say that you need to be very careful what you you allow to eat, to drink. To partake in because these are very trying times so i want you to understand um something saints we have to be very careful who will you allow in our midst okay who we allow sometimes you are allowing friends that have a lifestyle that all everything is okay and you will be contaminated by them you can see that what i'm saying here is disturbing them because some of them saying that they have reported me let us pray that we continue with this live stream to the end okay let me take you to hebrews 9:22 Hebrews 9:22 In fact the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood and without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness The law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood So I'm here to say this to you saints you need to be cleansed with the blood of the lamb because that blood was shed for your forgiveness and without it you wouldn't be able to be forgiven some of the things we have done we done it in ignorance we done it without knowing but if we are honest before god if we are sincere before the lord we can be forgiven we can be restored Exodus 23:32 Do not make a covenant with them or with their gods. Exodus 23 to 30 to, to, to 32 Do not make a covenant with them or 
with their gods. Don't make a covenant with certain people. Let me explain something to you. When you have a friend, right? That is a covenant. That is fellowship. That is covenant. That means that that person has access to you. Okay? And if you are a friends with a person, you are equally friends with whom they are serving. That's why we shouldn't have ungodly friends. We shouldn't have friends that don't worship God. We shouldn't have friends that don't have the same level of respect, of reverence for God. Because if you, if you fellowship with them, you are also fellowshipping with their gods. There is no middle term here, middle ground. It's either you with God or you are an enemy of God. So it is very important that you do not make a covenant with them. Allowing people to come to your house. Opening the doors of your home to somebody. You are opening yourself to them. You know what is a covenant is an, an invitation. Okay? You, you, you make a covenant by allowing the person in your personal space. You are making an agreement because you are agreeing to be their friend and they are agreeing to be your friend. Does that make sense? A business partner, for instance, that is not godly. That is not a business partner that is a, a, a godly a, a business partner that doesn't fear the Lord. And that is doing something else that is against God. Even if you are a believer, because you are in that business covenant. Partnership means covenant. This is just modern um, terminology. But in, in simple terms, it's covenant. Okay? Immediately you begin to submit under the gods. So it is very important that you only have a covenant with Jesus because that is the only covenant that can get you out, snatch you out from the hands of the enemy into the marvelous light of salvation and redemption. That is the only blood that has the power to speak of your atonement, your deliverance and everything. And for you to be able to use the blood of Jesus every time you pray and, and plead the blood and plead the blood, you need to be in covenant with the one who shed the blood, which is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Many people plead the blood, but they are not in covenant with the one who shed the blood, which is Jesus Christ, because why? They are still in sin. So the blood cannot atone for them. They can plead the blood left, right and center. The blood is not going to do anything for them because they are not in covenant with Jesus. We can only plead the blood and be under the blood if we are in covenant with Jesus. If we are not, we are unauthorized to use the blood. The blood is for the redeemed. The blood of Jesus is for the redeemed of the Lord. It is not for any, any person. The, bl the, the blood of Jesus and your covenant with Christ is what grants you access to the presence of the living God. So that he will even consider you, he will even look at you favorably. It's not because you are too cute, you are pretty, you are more intelligent and knowledgeable about this and that. No, it is because... You have a covenant with Christ. You and him are one. Okay? And because of that, his blood has power over your life. His blood is always in constant full effect upon your life. It's constantly speaking of your freedom, your deliverance, your forgiveness, your healing, your restoration, your prosperity, whatever it is. Okay? So some people are here, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, but you have no authorization to plead the blood because you and the owner of the blood are not one. Let me go deeper. What happens during Holy Communion? What happens during Holy Communion? During Holy Communion um, time, when we take Holy Communion, which we will do soon, 
when we break our fasting isn't that how we do it let us go to luke 22 from verse 19 to 20 and it reads luke 22 from verse 19 to 20 and he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying this is my body given for you to do this in remembrance of me and in the same way after the supper he took the cup saying this is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you this is what the devil tries to mimic okay he allows you to eat certain meats that are defiled so that you commune with him and allows you to drink also the blood so that you are in full communion with him and if you if he, in another way is through sensual activities flesh becomes one and then there is exchange of blood and fluids right the devil always tries to copy mimic God, he always tries to do that, to mimic the Lord. This is not a joke. That is why you see these celebrities drinking, drinking it and from one another. And it, this is all to mimic Holy Communion. You understand? So there is a mystery and the mystery has been revealed to you. It's not a mystery anymore. What is the power that is in any blood and, and the, the most important blood, which is the blood of Jesus, the most powerful blood is the blood of Jesus. So I'm happy to say to you now that it's not a mystery anymore. Okay. You now know that any animal, any cre creation from God, any creature, has life through blood. Okay? And that blood speaks. That's why you see the people who are in these different religions, slaughter animals and all these different, because they know this principle. And that is why in the Old Testament, the atonement of sin had to be done with calves and heifers and, and, and turtle doves and all these different things. We don't need any of it now. We have a, a perfect sacrifice that was presented by Jesus Christ of Nazareth on the cross of Calvary. If we accept that and we abide by his principles, abide by his commandments and become one with him, then there is no one that can defeat us. There is, n there is no bondage that cannot be broken and there is no evil covenant that cannot be broken. So I don't know what is your case. Perhaps you entered into an oath with, because of ignorance. Perhaps you are suffering because of your parents, what they did. Perhaps because you didn't have knowledge, you did certain things that you are now beginning to regret it. And you are beginning to feel sorrowful because you, you notice that you did so much wrong and you want to break those oaths. You have to enter into a new covenant. And we are going to pray. And before we pray this prayer, points. Surrender your life to Christ. Say, Jesus, I invite you into my heart. I've done this, 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 this and that. Be honest with God. And I want to break the oaths I did because of my disobedience, because of my own rebellion, because of my ignorance. I don't know what is the case, but you are going to be transparent to God. You're going to tell God. From your soul, from your heart, you're going to be transparent and you're going to tell him. And you're going to say, Lord, I need forgiveness. Forgive me. I heard today that your blood was shed on a cross of Calvary for the remission of my sins. So I'm, I'm asking you to purge me from all unrighteousness. I want to be born again. I want to be a new creation. I'm tired of suffering at the hands of the wicked one. I need a new life. I need my life back. Some of you today, after these prayers, you're going to get your life back from the hands of the wicked one that programmed you for evil. 
programmed you for failure, reproach, shame, disgrace, whatever it is. But we serve a faithful God, a forgiving God. It is his desire that you are saved. It is his desire that you break the covenant. That is why he came one day. He was born. He suffered for us on that cross, was pierced, wounded for our transgressions and iniquities. And shed his blood for the remission of our sins. And today his blood still saves, just like how he did 2,000 years ago. His blood still redeems. His blood still takes away the guilt and shame from your mind, your soul, your spirit, and the, the, the guilt and the condemnation. His blood still heals. Nothing has changed. The blood of Jesus has never lost his power. Still very much able. So now that you have confessed your sins, now you have asked God to forgive you, now that you have asked Jesus to come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, to take possession of your heart, your soul, your spirit, your body, and every area of your life. You are in submission to the Almighty through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm happy to announce to you that you've been forgiven. And don't return to your vomit. Don't return to all those practices and abominations that I already told you that are out. Live a righteous life. Sustain a life of righteousness by abiding in him. Abiding in his commandments, in his word. Find shelter under Jesus. Find shelter and refuge under his powerful blood. Glory be to God. So let us go into prayer saints. Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us, Lord God. We could have been in any morgue now, dead and already in hell, paying for our many sins and transgressions. But you gave us another chance, another day to repent. Another day, Father, Lord, to make things right with you and man. And here we are, Lord, repenting fully from all our sins and transgressions and iniquities against you and those made in your image. Thank you, Lord, for sending your, your only son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to die in our place on that cross of Calvary, to be wounded for our transgressions, pierced for our iniquities and diseases. We thank you, Lord. And we thank you, Father Lord, because you are such a merciful God. You waited patiently for us to repent, Lord God, and make amends. And you gave us life in the meanwhile so that we will not perish, but have the opportunity to say yes to Jesus. And we are indeed grateful for this wonderful opportunity. Father, Lord, in the Jesus, and we are indeed grateful for this wonderful opportunity. Father, Lord, in the taken on our behalf, sealing any ungodly covenant in our lives. Let the blood of Jesus reverse such oath and unseal any such ungodly covenants in the mighty name of Jesus. We break every evil agreement between us and the devil in the mighty name of Jesus. We renounce every cutting of ourselves or giving of our blood for any assignment, ceremonies or covenants with the devil. And we confess and renounce any of them in Jesus mighty name. Every curse that has come upon us as a result of our breaking an ungodly or blood covenant, we command you by the blood of Jesus to be turned into blessings in Jesus' mighty name. Every ungodly covenant from our relationships, we break and separate ourselves in Jesus' mighty name. Every evil sacrifice that has brought us into bondage, catch fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Every blood covenant, Established from 10 to 20 years, we break ourselves loose in the mighty name of Jesus. Every blood covenant and evil sacrifice affecting our marriages catch fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Every blood covenant made in the past that is tying us down and our hands expire in the mighty name of Jesus. 
every polluted covenant against our progress break by fire in the mighty name of Jesus every evil blood flowing through the surface of our matrimonial beds disappear by fire in the mighty name of Jesus any evil sacrifice made on our behalf in the kingdom of darkness scatter by fire in the mighty name of Jesus Every blood oath that we have made with evil altars burned to ashes in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil covenant assigned to trouble our lives, cancel, it's canceled by the blood of Jesus. Every evil curse operating in our lives break by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil effect of any demonic covenant in our lives be erased forever by the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, redeem our souls, bodies, and spirits from every blood oath and ungodly dedication in Jesus' mighty name. Every evil covenant that is working against our advancement, break by the anointing in Jesus' mighty name. Break by the anointing in Jesus' mighty name. Every evil covenant that is working against our advancement, break by the anointing in Jesus' mighty name. Let the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth destroy the foundation of any evil covenant operating in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Every foundational curses upon our lives break by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. We separate ourselves completely from the affliction from satanic dedication in Jesus mighty name. Let everything that has been transferred into our lives through evil sacrifices scatter onto desolation in Jesus mighty name. We break and lose ourselves from every inherited and self-imposed evil covenant in the mighty name of Jesus. We break and lose ourselves from every inherited evil curses in the mighty name of Jesus. We break and cancel every unclean covenant with any idol and the yoke attached to it in Jesus' mighty name. We stand against every evil sacrifice of loss and failure in Jesus' mighty name. We break every evil blood covenant that has brought fear and worry into our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, we neutralize evil blood covenants and unprofitable sacrifices with any ex in offerings in Jesus' mighty name. We cancel any evil effects of these ungodly covenants. In our lives and marriages in Jesus mighty name. We receive freedom through the blood of Jesus against any covenant. From whom the son sets free is free indeed. Evil blood covenants break forever in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord we thank you for the freedom that has been made available to us by Christ Jesus. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for delivering us. We thank you for allowing us to see another day, Lord God. Thank you for the mystery, Father Lord, of salvation in our lives. Thank you for the active power of the blood of Jesus to redeem, to save, to restore, to resurrect, and to transform, Lord God. Thank you, Father Lord, for another chance, a new opportunity to life, Lord God. Thank you, Father Lord, for the gift of life eternal. Thank you, Father Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Father Lord, for your Holy Spirit that guides us in all righteousness, that convinces us of our sin that brings us onto the works of salvation. Father Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for you because you are powerful and holy and righteous, Father Lord. There is none like you, O Lord. There is none like you who is able to heal, to steal, to, tr to, 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 to clean, to transform, Lord God, and to give us the victory, Lord God. Father Lord, we honor you and we thank you for saving us. We thank you for dying in our place, Lord God, for the remission of our sins, Lord God. We thank you for divine visit visitation today. We thank you for your presence here, Lord God. We thank you because nothing, Father Lord, is impossible to you, Lord God. You can save the most despicable criminal, Lord God, the most uh, unrighteous of the sinners because you will not despise us, Lord God, but it is your desire to save all. It is not your desire that we perish. It is not your desire that we perish, but that we live and we inherit everlasting life. So we thank you, O oh Lord, as we worship you and we we honor you. We thank you for our deliverance. We thank you for breaking the evil oaths that had the power over her lives, Lord God. And we thank you for being here. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. There is a person here, you are always having dreams and in your dream you see that either someone has shot you, you are bleeding, either you've been stabbed and your dreams are always like that. 
your dreams are always like that. And sometimes you get up so scared that you even check yourself to see if you are okay. That is you, Yeshua's name, and Esther faithful. Um, that dream indicates that there is somebody in your bloodline that either killed or harmed somebody. Okay, so we're going to repent on behalf of our forefathers. Okay, because some of our family members were wicked and they served time for killing, for harming others. And now that blood is speaking against us. Okay, so let us pray. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. All those saints that keep having this reoccurring dream in which they are bleeding, they've been shot, they've been stabbed. And Father, this is because of the wickedness of their forefathers. Something that they did to harm others that is now that blood is speaking against them. Father Lord, forgive our forefathers for the wickedness they've done. And release them, Father Lord, and release all of us from all guilt and shame, Father Lord. And from all this demonic and satanic um, um, curses, Father Lord, because of unrighteousness, because of evil, uh, break it and destroy it, Lord God. Break it and destroy it, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, as we repent for our forefathers, we are redeemed from every guilt and shame, from every condemnation, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. There is somebody here and you are having problems with your marriage. But the reason why you are having problems in your marriage is that at the beginning of your marriage, you, you are unfaithful to your husband. When you were recently married many years ago, during one or two months, you were still with your ex-boyfriend, although you were married. And you have to repent. You are the reason why your marriage is the way it is. Because the devil know what you did. And you have not repented. From starting that marriage wrong. In adultery. And because it happened so many years ago. You think that you don't have to ask God for forgiveness. But God is saying that once you confess that sin. Once you ask God for forgiveness. You'll be redeemed. Those problems in your marriages, in your marriage will just go. There will be peace because you are confessing it. You are confessing it to God. Write capital me. Write capital me. Confess it to God. Beloved sister, confess it, okay? Make a confession to God and make a confession to your husband. Tell him what happened. Be honest. And you are not going to suffer anymore in that marriage. Father, I pray for courage. I pray for the full backing of your Holy Spirit that as they confess, as they put things right, you will restore their marriages. You will resurrect that that is dead in that marriage. And give them the victory, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you did, all that you were doing and about to do in Jesus' mighty name. There is a lady here. You have a dream as well. And it's a reoccurring dream. In that dream, you are always giving birth, but the child dies in the end of the dream. And you don't understand why is this. And it's a reoccurring dream. Right, capital me. God wants to deliver you today and explain the meaning of your dream. Right, capital me. You, sister, that have a dream that you are always giving birth to a child. But in the end of the dream, the child dies. And the dream is very real. Come on now. Right, capital me. God wants to, to give you the victory. God wants to, to give you the victory, write capital me. Write capital me, please. Write very quickly. You have that reoccurring dream that you are giving birth to a child, but in the end, the child dies. 
write capital me write capital me please do it very quickly write capital me write capital me very quickly don't delay the chat you give birth to the child and the child dies sister janet you can't see the child anymore it is because there is a demonic covenant in your life for everything that you start in life every project every job everything never to come to an end okay that is what it is that is what is the meaning of that dream it means that you will labor you will get pregnant with the blessing you will you will have good projects you will go forward so far but when you are about to get to where you need to it dies that is the meaning all right is for you to never finish well what you have started that you will labor and labor and struggle and struggle and in the end the project will die that whatever it is that you are laboring for will just die okay it's a program from the enemy for you to to conceive good ideas to have good ideas to be to 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 to, to, to labor hard and then in the end it dies but i'll pray for you father lord in the mighty name of jesus those who have been programmed by satan to labor hard begin projects jobs whatever it is even ministries and then never be able to see the fruits of their labor Father Lord, I'm asking you today, break that curse in the mighty name of Jesus. Break that curse in the mighty name of Jesus. Break that curse in the mighty name of Jesus. Break that curse in the mighty name of Jesus. You that don't like to identify, but Sister Marella is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. That curse is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. When God is calling, you always identify. Because God is delivering you okay don't be afraid always identify okay and don't take too long like today just identify straight away be desperate for your deliverance okay be desperate be a person that is desperate all right amen um i want to say something that that said to you that i had a, a testimony a sister here had a child that was about to go into an operation. And they were telling her all so many things about the child and these so many negative things. And she said that she remember that during the live stream, I always tell people to pray with scripture. And she went and got the scriptures connected to the, her child's situation. And she made declarations over that child. That by his stripes, the child was healed. And she said that the child went into that operation. It was a successful one. And the child came out of that operation well. Okay. And this is the power of declaring the word of God. So she was given all sorts of negative feedback by the doctors, but she stood by God's promises. She said, Sister Dalila, remember you told us to pray with the word and to stand by God's word. And I just said, I don't receive any of it. And this mother began to declare that word over that child. And that child is well. Everything was a success with that operation. And I thank the sister for testifying. So it is important, like I said to you, bring the word of God. Okay? Bring the word of God. Because it's the word of God that will allow you to have the victory. That is why we call Jesus the living word. You are speaking Jesus into your situation. You are speaking God's will into your situation because it is his word. All right? So I want to say um, this to you, that you have to have in your heart the desire to be set free. And when you are desperate, you begin to make confessions, okay? Allow the word of God to do what he needs to do. I want to encourage you all that the ministration doesn't end when we go 
and we it ends here on on this platform no you should continue after you have left bring the scriptures and later on begin to you can even go on youtube turn it on and pray again because the devil is stubborn and he will not leave you alone if you are not consistent all right he will not leave you alone so you have to be desperate for your deliverance you know what happens to many Christians? When God is about to deliver you, when God, you are close to your breakthrough, the battle intensifies. You begin to have attacks. Suppose you are praying for your health. When God is about to heal you, you will begin to feel worse, more pain, and, and, and all these different things. Because the devil knows that you are close to your healing and he wants to frustrate you and he wants you to stop praying so that you will remain in that infirmity. When you are praying, for instance, for promotion at work, you will notice that you are being attacked at work. Everybody gangs up against you. Even your supervisor that used to like you is now showing you a strange face. It is because you are too close to that promotion. You are too close to that breakthrough. You are too close to whatever it is that God has for you. You are very, very, very close. And the devil wants to frustrate you at the edge of your breakthrough. If you are praying for your finances, what the devil does is that he will make things much harder for you financially. You're going to begin to have a little bit more difficulty in paying that bill and another bill and you will feel constrained. You will feel that you are feeling stifled in your finances. You are struggling more. That is the devil attacking you for you not to continue in your prayers, for you not to continue in your sowing, in your giving, so that you will you know, be, remain in that situation. Okay. Sometimes God will even say when you are sick to go and help somebody to go and, oh, but I'm sick. I don't feel well because the devil does not want you to do anything for God. It's too early to be on the live stream. I'm going to sleep a little bit more. God understands because I don't feel well. Somebody's calling you, asking you if you have any food, anything that you can give. And I, 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 I don't have it myself. And you begin to act selfishly and you don't understand that that is the testing time. And the devil is, is using you for your own destruction. All right. So because the battle has intensified, because the attacks have multiplied, that does not mean that the Lord is not with you. That does not mean that the, the, the Lord is, has abandoned. It just means that the devil is intensifying the battle because he knows that your breakthrough is around the corner. So I encourage you to, in moments like that, put on your garment of praise instead of garment of complaint and trust the Lord for your freedom. Trust the Lord for your breakthrough. And you have to have faith. If you prayed for your marriage, believe that God is doing it. If you prayed for your children, believe that God is already saving them. If you prayed for your finances, believe that God is already prospering you. Whatever it is that you are believing God, whether promotion, whether the salvation of a loved one, you have to believe because if you don't believe, what is the point of being on the live stream? What is the point of calling yourself a child of God if you have no faith? All right. So saints, is there anyone here, it is your first time and um, you would like to surrender your life to Christ. You would like to become a born again, a child of God. You want to make a covenant with God today. You, you are saying into your heart, I want to make an oath with Jesus Christ. I want to be his child. I want to establish a covenant today. Right, capital me. Beloved sister Elaine, Kali, Karen, you are welcome, my sister. Heaven rejoices at your decision today, including sister Erica. Heaven rejoices as sister Angie Newman is saying. There is a great celebration happening in heaven because of you, my sisters. Angels are dancing, including you, Blue and Chantel. Angels are dancing, toasting, celebrating. The Lord is rejoicing because a prodigal daughter has just returned home. 
And I want to say this to you, your life will never be the same again because the Lord Jesus is now erasing your name from the book of hell and eternal damnation and is writing your name in his book of life so that you will not perish but inherit everlasting life. That means that the day that you draw your last breath here in the land of the living or if the Lord comes back, you will not perish with the enemy. You will not go into hell anymore. You are going straight to the presence of Almighty God forever and ever. You shall live with God, fellowship with Him, worship Him for eternity. How wonderful is that? How wonderful is that? So I'm here to say, beloved saints, Whatever trials and tribulations you are going through in life and you are thinking of giving up, don't give up. You are a winner already because one with God is the majority. One with God is already the majority. Okay? And I want to say another thing to you. Now that you have surrendered your life to Christ, you cannot go back to your vomit, to your sins. Leave your sins where they belong in hell. Now that you are a new creation in Christ Jesus and you have fully repented of your sins, you're going to need to become, you are going to need to become a student of the word of God. It is important that you study the word of God. The word of God is God in action. You know God by reading his word. You know God also by developing a lifestyle of prayer and fasting and a lifestyle of worship. All right? And also, separate yourself from ungodly friends, ungodly associations, ungodly programs, ungodly activities. Okay? Because those will not strengthen you, but they will strip you of your authority in Christ and they will weaken you. Okay, you need to fellowship with other saints as well. That is why I'm inviting you to come to this live stream from Mondays to Saturday so that you are constantly growing in your knowledge of Christ Jesus. God willing, I'm always here by Mondays to Saturdays, United Kingdom, Kingdom Hour from 1 to 2.30 p.m. London City, to be more precise, just go on Google and check what time there will be in your country so that you won't miss any ministration. Um, do get a Bible, not an app, please, a paper Bible. If you are an English-speaking person, get a King James Bible. But if you speak any other language, get a Bible in your own language. By, by all means, study the Word of God. Begin to pray asking the Lord where he wants you to be baptized in the water. Unfortunately, I cannot baptize you here on the live stream. You're going to need to be part of a ministry. But I don't want to send you to any place. And you yourself, you don't want to be where God does not has not ordained for you to be. So um, begin to pray. Say, Lord, reveal me what congregation I need to be a part of so that I can um, be baptized. Okay? And I want to say this to you as well. Now that you've become a child of God, be consistent. Okay? Be consistent. Don't be on fire for God today and tomorrow you've gone back to your old lifestyle. All right? I would like to also invite you to subscribe to the YouTube page because I understand you are not going to be able to come every day. Many of you work, study. And do many other things and it's not going to be convenient to you to come every day. But don't worry. All live streams are uploaded on YouTube. Okay? You will have access to them. And to have access to the YouTube page, just go to my bio here on TikTok. And on top, you will see the YouTube icon. Click on that icon and it will lead you straight to the YouTube page. And that will always that will will, will as well um, give you access to previous ministrations, and you will get to know us better as a congregation. All right. 
um, I want to also remind you that there are fake accounts that are using my name and me image and the content here to ask you for money, donations, and threatening you if you don't give this and it, that will help. And, and it's not me, saints. I don't have any other alternative accounts. I only have this one. If you were been followed or befriended by an alternative one, I am imploring you to report and, um, you know, block them. Okay. If you would like to help with the furtherance of the gospel um, in this ministry, you can also, you can always do so by sowing a seed on the PayPal icon, the PayPal information that is on my bio. You don't have to give anything if God is not touching your heart to do so. Only give if God is touching you, okay? There is no financial exchange going on in here. You give if you can be of help. And if you can't, God will still bless you regardless. All right, saints? Hallelujah. Let me pray for you before you leave. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for each one of thy servants that came here today, Lord God. I thank you for their lives. I thank you for you, the deliverance that you've um, made possible for them today. Thank you for saving them. Thank you for restoring them. And Father Lord, I'm asking you today, continue to renew your precious armor around each one of them. Continue to sanctify, purify, and justify all of them with your precious blood. Be a wall of fire and a protection around, around them. Dispatch from your heavenlies armies of angels to encamp around them, to protect them and to deliver them from all evil. Father Lord, I'm asking you open doors for them. Doors, Father Lord, of prosperity. Doors of healing, promotion, elevation, honor. Father Lord, I pray that those who are ill, that you will heal them. Those who, who need a, your touch in their finances, that you will prosper them. Those in need of a job, that you will open the door. Those that, Father Lord, are having problems in their marriages, resurrect their marriages, Lord God. Those, Father Lord, who are struggling with their children, there are rebellions. I pray for the salvation of their children. Those stuck in addictions, Father Lord, deliver them. Father Lord, visit each one of them, protect, guide them. Father Lord, order their steps so that they will always be at the right place and at the right time. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Father Lord, King of glory, I dedicate each one of thy servants here, faithful tithers and givers of ministry, into your holy and precious hands. Remember them today, Lord God, according to the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 10. Starting from Sister Lori Noble's grave, family members Anthony, Kate, and Jacy, Nick, Daddy Leo, Laterica, Sister Geraldine Collins, Foley Broderick's, Sister Brenda Pizarro and her son Kevin, Selena Bradley, Foley Bondricks, Cardin Theos, Janet Thompson, Tyron Harris, Jade Witt Kuhn, Giovanka Gregorius, Jalimar Diamond, Tuana Watson, Adrian Galloway, Jasmine Mitchell, Veronica Quayle, Alice Kudale, Karen Lewis, AGC Wholesale, Natalie Rahel, Joanna Victorino, Byron Dumas, Emily Jackson, Carolyn Chambers, Kita Mila Cole, Natalie Nyundu, Rokita Wola, parents Raymond Renova, family members Kenley, Keisha, Kelvin, Kaylee, Cameron, Leighton Britt, Lorian Baker, Dolores Edwards Harding, Elaine Todd, Rose Beber, Rovina Collins, Jacqueline Bogle, and her household, Ruth Lua, Sheila Ray, Carolyn Wasteland, Iru Sport, Cassandra Boiso, Juni Jusali, Lakeisha, R Products, Antoinette Family, Ant Antoinette Fleming, Byron Dumas, Chantel Small, chosen for such a time as this, Jasmine Mitchell, Carolyn Dacian Chambers, Simone Morgan, Michelle Wallace, husband Wade, Antoinette Lewis, Natasha Fogel, Sanj Jordan and Jr., Mother Minnie Benjamin, Genoa B. Hercare, Asila Preston, children Teresa and Ryan, Mama Hurley, and Roberta Davis, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember them according to Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. And rebuke the devourer 
the canker worm and the grasshopper in their finances, their bank accounts, their credit cards, their jobs, their businesses, their ministries, and in their pockets and directly in their source of income. And render the heavenlies open unto each one of them and bestow upon them such a blessing that, that they won't have enough storehouse to contain it. I speak over their lives, Lord God. Deuteronomy 28 and the blessings of Abraham. Father Lord, they are the head and not the tail. They are above and not beneath. Father Lord, I speak over their lives. They are like the palm trees planted by the river banks. They will never wither nor dry. They shall yield its good fruit in season and out of season. Father Lord, when their enemies come against them one way, they shall flee seven ways because that is their inheritance. They shall lend to many nations, but borrow from none. Father Lord, enlarge their coast. Enlarge their territory, Lord God. Father Lord, allow them to possess the keys of King David to unlock the door of their destiny, to unlock the door of their purpose, Father Lord, of their breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, rest upon them, Father Lord, afresh, such an anointing to do great exploits for you. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, clothe them with your righteousness. Clothe them, Father Lord, with, with greatness. Father Lord, I speak over their life's success, elevation, promotion. I speak over their life's unmerited favor, divine connections. Father Lord, release from the four corners of the world. Father Lord, from the south to the east, from the south to the north, from the east to the west, release their destiny, help us today to locate them. And Father Lord, I pray that Father Lord, they will bless them according to your will for them. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, Father Lord, let these saints, Father Lord, be fruitful and multiply in all that they do. And I speak over their lives that are like the house on the hill. They cannot be hidden. The, the gifts shall continuously make room for them and bring them before great man in Jesus' mighty name. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, visit also Sister Roberta Davis, Karen Adelie Moss, Joyce Bacchus, husband Faraz Bacchus, Gladys Kobo, Deidre Sanderson, Greg White, Tropic Bay Boutique, Daughters Kelaya and Anisha, Lashonda Brown, Angie Newman, Felicia Doe, Noel Lucian, Taz Flumo, Tarmisha Brown, aka Golden Lattice, Tarmisha Hayes and the Household, Shimori Chanel, Kim Lehman, Cody, Megan, Chris, Andrew Apostolo, and, and his household, Rachel Reed, Mrs. Martin, Selena Bradley, Erin Jones, Mother Brenda, Elijah, Elizabeth Tadis, Sarah Oguto, Stacey Cunningham, Karen Lewis, Jewel Sample, and husband Dishon, Amanda Bacchus, Wafisa Bacchus, Titi Ture, daughter Abiba Tu, and her parents, Teresa Azinj, Elizabeth Escamilla, Daughter Lily Beth, Kelvin Calix, Brenda Togo, Sister Joy, and the entire household, Mrs. Erin and household, Gayla Niso, Sister Michelle and her ministry, Spetile and Les Malale, Daughter Vunene, Mother Buziziwe, Sister Bonge Kile, Sydney, Nisi B, Doris, Kasai Films, Shane Furtado, Kasai Furtado, Neilani, Kechi Kamara, Apimbola Akanu, Daniele Lang, Lesinga Holcrom, Selena Bradley, Toya Thorpe, Salmon Luris, Carolyn Wasnant, Yembezi Gululo, aka Lulu24. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, remember that faithful servants, faithful givers and tithers of this ministry, Lord God. According to your promises to them in the book of Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, and rebuke the devourer, the canker worm and the grasshopper. In their finances, their bank accounts, Father Lord, in their pockets, in their source of income, their jobs, their ministries, and their businesses. Father Lord, and render, Father Lord, the floodgates of heaven who open unto thy servants and shower upon them such a blessing that they won't have enough storehouse to contain it, Lord God. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and I declare Deuteronomy 28 and the, all the blessings of Abraham upon their lives. Father Lord, they are the head and not the tail. They are above and not beneath. They shall lend to many nations, but borrow from none. Father Lord, they are like the palm trees planted by the river banks. They shall yield its good fruit in season and out of season. And when the enemies come against them one way, they 
they shall flee seven ways because that is the inheritance father lord everything that they touch shall always be fruitful and multiply Father Lord, I speak over their lives, Father Lord. Father Lord, I speak on a, a mantle of excellence, Lord God, of promotion, of elevation, open doors, Father Lord, divine connections, unmerited favor. Father Lord, I speak over their lives, Lord God, they, that you are the shepherd according to Psalm 23. Father Lord, they will never, Father Lord, they will never, ever, ever lack anything, Father Lord. And I'm asking you today, Lord God, order their steps so that they will always be at the right place and at the right time. Father Lord, I speak over their lives. They are like the house on the hill. They cannot be hidden. Father Lord, the gifts shall continuously make room for them, Lord God, and bring them before great men. Father Lord, I speak over their lives that as far the sun is from the earth, so shall poverty, limitation, stagnation, lack of achievement, reproach, shame, disgrace, and the plague be far away from thy servants, Lord God. I speak over their lives, Lord God, that they cannot be defeated, Lord God. The blood of Jesus covers them from the from the north to the south from the east to the west father lord dispatch also from the four corners of the world all their destiny help us Luga. In the mighty name of Jesus, to locate them and to bless them, Father Lord, according to your will and purpose for them. Father Lord, I'm asking you today that put their enemies to shame, Lord God. Let, let every trial turn into testimony, Lord God. Let, let every adverse situation, Father Lord, Father Lord, be a motive for testimony, Lord God. Father Lord, I pray that today, Lord God, you will never leave them nor forsake them. Father Lord, they shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Oh, Father Lord, I thank you for them, Lord God. And I thank you because I know that Father Lord, signs and miracles and wonders are following them and I will never let go of them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you all saints. I love you. Thank you for coming. And God willing, I shall see you all um, Monday. All right? Um, remember, you are more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? God is too faithful to fail you. And I am expecting your testimony, saints. I know that the testimony will be great in Jesus' name. Shalom and see you on Monday, God willing.